Now finding jurors in the trial for three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery is proving to be a challenge. The main obstacle, finding people without strong opinions in the case. In the first three days, only 10 people have qualified to even have a chance to be on the jury. Today, two more have been dismissed. Lawyers are sifting through hundreds of candidates to find 12 jurors and four alternates. CBS 46's Haley Mason is live in Brunswick tonight after day three in the courtroom today. Haley. Rick, with a case like such, with a case like this, with such compelling video, it is understandable that a lot of the jurors would have formed some opinions, but some say they can set them aside. It'll be up to the attorneys and the judge to decide if they really can as they try to sift through a fair jury pool. We took our coverage outside the courtroom today, though, to talk to some people in the community about how this case has changed their way of life. Inside the Glen County Courthouse, day three of jury selection underway with a new set of 20 potential jurors. What we're going to be doing first thing is again this general question. So both sides will have an opportunity in this room to ask you some questions. If you feel like maybe you have a negative feeling about Mr. Travis McMichael, then raise your hand and we can explore it later. Finding people without knowledge or opinions on the case, unlikely. But the question is, can they judge based solely on facts? Is there anyone here who feels right now that they're just not going to be able to follow the law in this particular case? In the surrounding community, the investment is deeply personal. Reverend John Perry, who pastors a nearby church, says his son played football with Ahmaud Arbery. He says this case has brought a deeper level of community engagement. Our community has come to this place of awakening, understanding that they can't just trust the process to work, that they have to be an active part of making sure that elected officials are really doing their job. Vocal activists bust in from across the country, greet Ahmaud Arbery's father as he walked into the third day of hearings. Hello, my people. Their cries for justice could be heard from nearby streets. Voted out the past DA, we have a new DA. Now we also have a new um, chief of police because our community has stood up and said the things that took place are unacceptable. The activists have taken their movement beyond the steps of the courthouse and into the city of Brunswick. They often gather right here in front of the mural of Ahmaud Arbery that's painted on the side of the Brunswick African American Cultural Center. Marvin Weeks from Brunswick painted the mural on the tabby structure. The compressed seashell, sand and lime, he says, represents the historic strength of the community. People can identify. Those of us who have lived here have saw people in pickup trucks and other things happening all the time. And this story is a story that resonates. Meanwhile, the wheels of justice turn slowly in a courtroom where eager and engaged jurors face a closely watched moment in history. We have two different families that have been very affected by this ordeal. And you have people connected to those families. And so there are a lot of emotions that are involved on both sides. And we saw those emotions rising today, especially from the activists who have been outside this courthouse. They actually were greeted by the sheriff who spent some time with them during lunch today as they commit to be here throughout this trial. Meanwhile, inside the courtroom, we know two more jurors were struck this afternoon. One defense attorney says 64 is the quote magic number that he wants to see for possible jurors that will whittle things down to the final selection that will go in that jury box. We'll be here bringing you coverage throughout the trial. Reporting live outside the Glen County Courthouse, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. Haley, thank you. I'm